Today we're going to be removing the four anterior teeth and making an immediate bridge with implants. Um, this particular site, uh, number 24 and 25 are failing, especially 25. Um, and uh, and then we looked at the option of taking four anteriors out and just making a bridge, but his cuspids have a little mobility, and so they're not the most stable. Uh, 23 and 26 are also mobile. Um, and this particular site may be okay for really narrow implants, but then what if later on 23 and 26 end up having some problems? We thought about maybe taking a 3.5 and making um a single implant and restoring it with two teeth, which is an option, but I think long term we're going to be better off just keeping the cuspids like they are and um, putting in immediate implants and doing an immediate provisional. What I'd like to do now is uh, show you a little bit of a difference between some of the provisional abutments that are available. This is a Zimmer provisional abutment and you can see it's a plastic um, internal hex configured um, abutment with a long screw. Well, what you end up having to do is end up cutting the screw off and using it as your coping screw. Um, the nice thing about this particular system is this is the implant direct system. It comes with a short screw and then separately you buy the long screws that you can reuse to index your abutment with your provisional and then you don't have to cut it you just use the small screw which is really convenient especially in this case where we um, made our provisional ahead of time this is our lower impression and we used the lower impression and lined it with composite and cured it and then we were able to make a composite bridge that we hollowed out to accommodate the two abutments. Those abutments were modified so let's look at the original one. The original one looks like this and I cut it down as well as added some retentive features and the nice thing about having a short coping screw is that I already had my short coping screw I can place that in and then I can cut down my abutment without having to have that long screw sticking out or cutting it pre-cutting it which would necessitate having two screws. So I was able to modify that so that it'll fit in there once we get our implants in place and I'll be able to index that. I've also made ovate ponics out of the two centrals. You can see that ovate configuration. Then in addition to that, this particular abutment I left the hex on and this one I cut the hex off because once they're, these two implants are in if they're not exactly parallel then the hexes aren't going to match but this will be able to seat onto, into the bevel inside one of the implants and then the other one will be able to index into the hex of the other implant. Okay, today we're going to be removing 23, 24, 25, 26. You can see 25 is just really loose. 26 is pretty loose. 20. These are loose. He's got a little mobility in his cuspids. So, plan is place the implants in the good sites and do a provisional bridge today. So, we got our teeth removed, and those were just really simple extractions got the extraction sockets clean, especially number 25, and uh, now we're going to start prepping the implant. Can we get behind you okay? Right here. So 
looking at our parallel pins here, I can probably move this just a little bit toward the distal lingual, and the same thing here, a little bit toward the distal lingual. Okay, so we've got our parallel pins positioned nicely. We're almost to the 3.5 size. All right, we're placing our implants. These are implant direct, 3.5 by 10s, and the body is a 3.7, but the restorative end is a 3.5. Okay, we've got our implants leveled at about, oh, three millimeters on the facial subgingival, which I think is going to be a, a good distance as far as achieving the, the emergence profile that we want. Now we're going to profile the bone. Okay, so we got our guide in the implant and now we're going to be uh, profiling the bone. Bunch of waterless. We normally Apple like to start out in reverse just to get past the soft tissue. All the soft tissue is kind of loose here. I think I'm good. Go forward. Okay, we're placing our bone graft. This is a mixture of Dynagraph D with uh, freeze-dried bone, mineralized freeze-dried bone, and tetracycline. Okay, we've got our abutments in place, and we've got this fitting over, and I'm um, going to lift these two together right now. So we got our three pieces indexed, and uh, now we're just going to be filling it in. Okay, so we got our provisional in place. We've got cotton in the access holes. And we're fill that with flowable composite. So here's our uh, implant provisional today. We've grafted the um, 24 and 25 sockets and we've placed implants from the 23 and 26 sites in our uh, provisional. You take a look at his occlusion. He has really no occlusion here, but he's a pretty severe grinder in Bruxer. Um, so slide your jaw straight forward. And we've got that cleared as well. And he wears a sleep apnea appliance, so we'll be uh, making sure that that's working too. Okay, here are two immediate implants with our immediate provisional. And um, we checked out his night guard. His night guard is free and clear. Um, actually, it's a, uh, it's a sleep apnea appliance, so there's an upper and lower with a little hook to put, pull the jaw forward. Um, but that actually had already been adjusted out of a contact with these teeth. And um, we're going to take a look at things in a couple weeks.